hello guys, and welcome to another discussion video. And today, I am joined by Anton Retro, and we are going to discuss why 2023 will likely be the best year for the Nintendo Switch. After that Nintendo Direct, we got a ton of interesting announcements for this year, like Detective Pikachu Returns, Super Mario RPG Remake, and then Wario WarioWare Move It, and um, Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Just so many interesting titles, and it's really fleshed out this year, along with all the other things that we've gotten, like um, Fire Emblem Engage, the Kirby remake, the Advance Wars remake, Pikmin 4, Tears of the Kingdom. So this year is really packed, and there's definitely a few yeah. reasons why this has been better than past year years for the Switch, and it might even be better than 2017. So, yeah. It's really shaping up to be one of Nintendo's best years for the Switch. Even, I think it, it definitely surpasses 2021, um, 2020, 2022. Yeah. Um, I think it really comes close to 2017, so 2017, and I think it also is kind of just seen by just how they ha they're just sequels, right? Most of the games are yeah. sequels been... um, to those games that came out then. And not only that, there's just some games that just really helped to fill out the lineup. And uh, But this year, I just feel a lot more excited and uh, to, to play so many of these games because last year, I just didn't really feel like that. Yeah, and i just like to say, before we get into the discussion here, I just started an Amazon affiliate program. So if you click on the link and buy something there, um, using my link, um, it will help support the channel. So make sure to check that out if you're interested. I'll put the link in the description and in a pinned comment. So yeah, I feel like the first reason why 2023 has been shaping up to be one of the best years for the Switch is the holiday titles and the holiday schedule in general for this year. Since between October and November, we're getting Detective Pikachu Returns, Super Mario Bros. Wonder, WarioWare Move It, and Super Mario RPG. These are all really interesting, and they're not just relying on Pokemon. I know we'll get that get to that in a little bit, but they aren't relying on either Pokemon or one smaller title for the rest of the year. Um, as much as I love games like Hyrule Warriors, Age of Calamity, or Metroid Dread, um, even Mario Party Superstars, they aren't really that big. Like, I mean, those are great games overall, and they're great. I think Metroid Dread is probably the biggest out of all of them. Yeah. Because honestly, with Hyrule Warriors, I didn't really care much of it. And even so, I find that game just not as... Yeah, and then Mario... It, it wasn't really a major title, and even coming back to it later on, just, it's not too great of a game. Yeah, and then Mario Party Superstars, that's debatable, because it is a Mario spin-off, after all. If it was supplemented... It did, it, it did do pretty well yeah. as well in the if it was skills, supple so I, I would think that it's pretty large on Nintendo's yeah. list. Yeah, if it was supplemented with a bigger game, I feel like that might have been a little... Um, but now we're getting so many great holiday titles, and it's actually shaping up to be like really interesting overall. I mean, I might be a bit biased as a Mario fan. I mean, I do love a ton of other series, but like just seeing Super Mario RPG there kind of highlighted as like the big November title is just really nice to see. Yeah, it's taking Pokemon's uh, spot there. Yeah, and then Super Mario Bros. Wonder as well is um, pretty big. I'm I'm actually kind of surprised they didn't release a Mario RPG in October and Mario Wonder in November. But honestly, I'm kind of fine with that because I feel like Super Mario RPG needs all the attention it can get around that time. So, and, and it's not like around all of these other titles like Detective Pikachu and um, Sonic Superstars and Spider-Man 2. Um, Super Mario Bros. Wonder can definitely outshine a lot of those titles, at least for some people, but Mario RPG might need a bit more help, despite the fact that it is still a pretty big game and a lot of people know about it. I still think it is pretty nice that mm. it does have its own slot away from other titles. It is close to WarioWare Move It, but not super close. Um, and then Detective Pikachu Returns, um... That was kind of weird putting it close to Super Mario Bros. Wonder. I'm a little surprised that isn't a September title. 
but it is slightly slightly smaller than the other one since it's the $50 release, as well as WarioWare Move It being a $50 release. So I can see why they did it in that way. Yeah, I think so too. I think I think them just um spreading everything out really nicely just uh has we have a lot of games to look forward to but yeah i, I do find it weird that there's like september kind of has a bit of a gap yeah there i think they could have put maybe warrior there like they did last time but it is interesting that warrior is getting really a holiday like t uh date there yeah it's not too like um I wouldn't, ha I wouldn't have expected that. I wouldn't even have expected a WarioWare game either. Yeah, you know, I think that's a very good place to put it as well. Um, WarioWare Get It Together, even though a lot of people said it's like one of the worst selling um, <laughs> Switch game, first party Switch games, I feel like that's mostly due to the fact that it's um, not as big as other series, but it's still sold over a million copies, which isn't bad at all. And it's, st and it's actually outsold some other WarioWare games. So I, I mean, want to They're making another one. So yeah. They really have confidence in the series. Yeah, they wouldn't. Yeah. I feel like they're actually pushing it to the holiday to actually give it an extra boost this time. Because um, maybe they were thinking, oh, WarioWare, get it together. It sold fine, but it didn't sell as well as we expected. Maybe they were thinking, oh, September might not be the best time to release it due to the fact that there was a direct around that time and people were looking forward to, like, other titles like Metroid Dread and different things like that. When they stick it in the holiday season, sometimes it doesn't even matter what other games release around that time. It releases close enough to where they can have that advertising push, push around um, holiday shopping, Black Friday, where... um. People can actually like pick it up around that time so yeah i feel like that's definitely a very strategic move um for nintendo to release it that way and i feel like all of these titles are very strategically placed like like i said um detective pikachu mario wonder they can do fine on their own i feel just due to the fact that they have a lot of recognition behind their properties um Super Mario RPG, that is a recognizable game, but that's good that it's getting the spotlight because not everyone will, mm -hmm. might give it a, like, I don't think everyone would give it a chance if it released too close to, like, Super Mario Bros. Wonder or released in October alongside Sonic Superstars or Detective Pikachu and Spider-Man 2. So it's good that, ha that it has its own slot, like I said earlier. Um, yeah, everything seems strategically placed here. So, much more strategically placed than previous years. Like, in previous years, they really just plopped Pokemon in November and just called it a day. Like, it just seemed like this is actually one of the only years that Nintendo really isn't fully relying on Pokemon as a holiday title. Like, 2017 didn't. Um, 2018 kind of partially did, but that was mostly Smash that carried the holiday for 2018. Um, 2019, we did get Luigi's Mansion 3, and that game did sell well, but I still do think that Nintendo was kind of banking on Pokemon carrying that holiday season, um, kind of putting um, all of their bets on Pokemon that holiday season, just to the, just the fact that it got the um, spotlight in November and everything with no other titles releasing in November, to my knowledge. There might, there might have been something else, but that's... I might have forgot about it, but at least 2019 got Luigi's Mansion 3. 2020, Pandemic. Like, in, in, like to be completely honest, um, we really didn't get any concrete holiday title for um, 2020. Like, Hyrule Warriors, I wouldn't really say that counts much as a holiday, like a traditional holiday title. Because that is kind of a smaller spin-off. Mm. Then 2021, we did get Metroid Dread. In Mario Party Superstars, but again, Nintendo put a bit too much attention on Pokemon once again. 2022 did the exact same thing, um, and then that time, I feel like that was really the only first party um, holiday title we've gotten since we did get Sparks of Hope, but yeah, Sparks of Hope was published by Ubisoft, 
So that doesn't really fully it count. He wasn't really taking up Nintendo's resources, and neither was Bayonetta uh, 3. And uh, it, it just showed that really Nintendo wasn't, didn't really have anything for the holiday season. They didn't even bother to um, do a Nintendo Direct around that time. Yeah. And even the Direct they did around like 2022, like that didn't really announce too much either. It just announced Kirby Return to Dream Land Deluxe. Yeah. And then showed Zelda again. And they kept showing Zelda as the last thing for many Directs. Yeah. So and actually, they didn't really have major announcements to showcase. Yeah, and actually segueing into that point, I feel like Nintendo has actually had better transparency this year. I know some things were a little weird around the beginning of June, but there's always times when Nintendo lacks transparency and there was actually a reason for that because they were getting ready for a Direct. And it was just a little uncertain. We didn't know there was going to be a Direct, but the fact that we actually did get a Direct in June was huge. And it proves that Nintendo can still do Directs when there is an E3. And it's great. Yeah. I feel like that definitely brought a lot of confidence um, for Nintendo back into me because I was thinking, oh, they're only going to do two directs a year. One of them or even both of them could flop and not have that. Well, I mean, that doesn't really matter that much if the direct isn't good or not for Nintendo. But usually it is kind of disappointing when we don't get many game announcements or that um, interesting announcements in general um, at a Nintendo yeah, direct. Like so, really, 2019 was the last time we had a lot of announcements. Yeah, I would actually and say... And then the last few years... I mean, like, 2021 had quite a few things. Yeah. Uh, but I think this time it just feels like there's a lot more. And it's funny when I hear people t complaining about the Direct recently. Yeah. Especially when they say, like, oh, there's a... Uh, you know, they didn't have enough, you know, and it's like... Yeah. To me, I don't understand. Like, what did you... like? Or it's like, oh, they had... They didn't have anything that I want. It's like, <laughs> then, okay, then what do you want then? Like, y you've already got lots of Kirby now. You got a new Zelda game. Do you really want a new one already? Yeah. Um, You know, like, I just find it very strange. Like, some people were, a lot of people were complaining about, like, it was an okay direct. It didn't have anything I was interested in. I'm just like, okay, then, like, what are you interested in then? Like, Nintendo put so much yeah, stuff in there. Yeah, like, a lot of, I would say it had... A wide variety of announcements, even though I had a ton of Mario and I also had a ton of farming. Well, not it was like one farming sim that was kind of. But honestly, even the variety of like third party games was really great. Yeah. There was really nothing that was like super boring. In fact, I think that uh, they they kind of lessened with the, the third party stuff for that direction. Yeah, and they announced a lot of it before. They actually got a lot of the announcements yeah. out of the way too, which was really good. And another thing. I'm just glad in general that we don't, like like I said, we don't have two directs. We actually have three directs to kind of keep us going throughout the year and to actually keep Nintendo's announcements going throughout mm. the year. It's better transparency, and it's great overall. I feel like for 2022, they just really didn't have anything like to announce for the rest of the year. They already announced everything, but this year we didn't know anything, so direct made a lot of sense. So I hope they keep going in this direction of actually having a Direct in June along with their February and September Directs. So yeah, it's great that they're getting a lot more transparent about things. Even with the Mario Kart DLC, they kind of hinted um, Nintendo of Canada was like, okay, it's coming soon, you yeah. know? And uh, I think even just a bit of that is cool. And, uh, you know, I, I felt Nintendo did a great job with the Direct. I, th I think so many franchises are, are covered, like... I just find it funny when people are like, you know, there could be a direct. Um, like, I think there's even comments of like, you could go to uh, back to a direct a few years ago, right? Which maybe has very few announcements, if any. People will be like, this is the best direct I've ever seen. <laughs> and then you see the new one, which has so much stuff in it. And people are like, it's okay. I'm just like, what? What do you mean? Like, it's like, if you would have saw the direct mini in 2018, you would not have been happy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but like, yeah. Um, but next... One thing that I've noticed is that we haven't been getting any lackluster or unfinished releases. I know that's kind of controversial to say, like, oh, unfinished games. It's the thing that the beach keeps going on about. But um, um, but to be, I feel like the beach really brought up a lot of good points about um, the lackluster or unfinished releases. 2022 really didn't look good around the 
early, like the late spring, the early summer, since we got both Nintendo Switch Sports and Mario Strikers Battle League. I mean, I respect um, anyone's opinion if they like those games, but honestly, I feel like they really, like, they really didn't feel like full, complete games. And it's really disappointing seeing stuff like that out of Nintendo, because, like, what we're seeing this year, we're seeing very high-quality titles, seeing what Nintendo is fully capable of, but when they release these half-baked, unfinished, incomplete titles, it seems like their Nintendo isn't putting all of their effort into these. And it seems like they're really mm. pushing these out j just as filler. Like, it, it really is just filler, a lot of these. Just to pad out the release schedule. Yeah. And you know, one game that I could say is filler this year, but it's not really that big of a deal because it's a much smaller title that Nintendo barely advertised, which was kind of funny. Um, and it's very insignificant, a $30 casual release. If that is everybody one to switch. You know, I'm kind of glad that this is the filler title for this year because it really isn't like, a, it really isn't that infamous. Like everyone was saying like with the leaks and everything, this is going to be horse crap. It's going to be the most infamous Nintendo game. It's going to destroy Nintendo's reputation. But <laughs> it ended up being kind of a, a nothing release. Like it just came and went. Yeah. And uh, it's funny how, how little fanfare that reviewers gave it. Like, I, I've been going through some reviews. It got an 80 from, like, one, um, from, uh, I, I forget which one it is here. But, yeah, it got, it got an 80. Um, and then it, it got also a 40 as well hmm. on Metacritic from another uh, outlet. Yeah, with everybody one to switch I'm sure it's not, like, a bad game. I'm sure it's just a harmless party game. Um... But yeah, I think compared to like Nintendo's other somewhat weird or um, low effort titles, I feel like everybody one to Switch is definitely um, it handled it better, I would say, and it's definitely kind of harmless compared to Nintendo's mm -hmm. other um, kind of low effort filler titles. Um, but yeah, and another thing is that we've been getting a lot of great remakes, like Return the Dream Land, Advance Wars, Super Mario RPG. Those are all great. Like, Advance Wars and Mario RPG especially are bringing back um, older series that haven't gotten a lot of attention in a while. Return the Dream Land Deluxe was great. But we've also been getting a lot of ports and remasters of, like, GameCube titles, like Metroid Prime, Pikmin 1 and 2, and then Baton Kaito's coming in September. So, yeah, I, I feel like we're getting a lot of new releases along with these older releases as well, like through remakes and remasters. And even though they are existing games, I feel like they definitely are supplementing the lineup because a lot of them are giving people a new way to play these games. Either um for people who've never played these games before, since GameCube games, a lot of the time, um, are very inaccessible nowadays. And then, with these yeah. remakes, they feel, like, very, um, like, refreshed, kind of, um, new experiences. Especially with ones like Advance Wars and Super Mario RPG, that kind of give it a completely new art style. Yeah, honestly, Advance Wars is probably the one I least expected to return. Yeah. That's one of those franchises that e people weren't even really asking for. But it was cool to see them return with it, even though it had a, a bit of a a history. Yeah, say. <laughs> that was kind of weird how they. I mean, it was definitely understandable why they did it, but it was just weird how it went from. It was originally going to release in December 2021, then it was pushed to like. April, was it February? No, it wasn't February. It was it like was April. April 22nd, and then they released it on the exact same day. A year yeah, later. that was kind of weird. Um, it's like, they should have just released... Too bad they couldn't have just released it originally. Yeah. They wouldn't have had any problems, but the game is out, and I, I haven't checked it out yet. What, what do you think about about it? Oh, it's pretty fun. I, I like it. I know some people were critical of it because of the, the voice acting and things like that. Um, 
But is it, is it like enough content? Oh there? yeah, there's definitely enough content in the game. Um, because it includes like, um, two games in there. So yeah, I I definitely think it's worth checking out. And yeah, and then another thing that I kind of touched on earlier, but I wanted to discuss it a little more, is that they're not relying on Pokemon this year. They, I, I was really no. worried that they would treat the DLC like it was one, like, big thing that they were going to push this year, like they did in 2020. Um, they are going to be like, oh, you wanted a new game release? Uh, well, we're going to give you the Pokemon DLC instead. We're going to treat, like, this whole month dedicated to the Pokemon DLC. Um, they might do that for September anyway, but it doesn't matter at this point. But, um... Yeah, I'm not interested in the DLC. Yeah. I'm not getting it. I, they really kind of... I was so job. worried at the beginning of the direct there. Like, they showed it off first. That, like, it was kind of funny. I said, like, showing off the Pokemon DLC at the beginning of the direct was the funniest fake out that Nintendo has ever done. Like, they showed off, like, five minutes of this DLC, and it was, like, super disappointing. Um, but then a few minutes after that, like, boom! Super Mario RPG, Detective Pikachu, New Princess Peach game, um, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon remake, WarioWare, um, all of these cool third-party games, like Metal Gear Solid and things like that, and then Super Mario- And Mar Penny's big, uh, big break That away. as well. That's and cool then Super too. Mario Bros. Wonder, and there's, there's so many great titles from that Direct, but they started it off, um with the Pokemon DLC. That was just so weird. And it was a strange way to start it off. They usually don't I mean like actually in the past few directs they have started off pretty underwhelming. Yeah. But I think it's kind of maybe part of their strategy to make it seem like not too hype at the beginning. Yeah, and, maybe kind of get kind of everyone's expectations in place before they reveal like anything too exciting. But yeah. Um so the final thing is that they're actually continuing the do I know this can kind of go for any year, but I would say this year we've been definitely getting a lot of amiibo figures, and it's great that they're continuing to have amiibo support and um do these new amiibo figures. Like we got Kazuya and Sephiroth earlier this year, then we're getting Pyra, Mithra, Noah, and Mio um later this year, and Pyra Mithra later this month. Yeah, lots of Xenoblade characters. And then for Tears of the Kingdom, we're getting well, we already got Link, but we're also gonna get um Ganondorf and Zelda, which is pretty nice. And yeah, I it's great that they're yeah. continuing to do a lot of amiibo figures. They really haven't given up on amiibo and they're really continuing it as like a thing that they've been doing, and they've been pushing it in some games to a some slight degree. And it, it's really nice to see them doing that because amiibo is one of my favorite um weird gimmick things that Nintendo has done over the years. And I really like the collect amiibo figures, so it's great that they're continuing this. Yeah. It is pretty cool to see that, because I think amiibos are really cool, and uh, I'm glad they haven't really stopped with making new ones, but of course, one thing I've noticed is that they like to make new amiibos. I don't, they don't just like to make, okay, here's a... Uh, unless it's really like a very specific game, we like to make sure each amiibo is amiibo is distinct, right? Yeah. So that's one thing with Nintendo with them recently. If they're gonna release them, it has to be something very different. Yeah. But and then also one kind of wish that I have is that they do amiibo figures for the Mario RPG remake, like Gino, Mallow, and then Chibi Mario. That'd be really cool. I I like to see that, but yeah, I would it's be not likely, but. I would really You know, like I do that. think there is a slight chance because they did do amiibo figures for Link's Awakening, and there's like yeah. a lot of support behind the Super Mario RPG remake. It's something people have been wanting for a very long time, and Gino is a very popular character. So I think that would be really nice to see amiibo figures for that. I think Nintendo can possibly they do didn't it. Didn't reveal too much about that game either, so there's always a large chance. Yeah. So yeah. Anyways. Nintendo's 2023 has been shaping up to be really good and is potentially going to be the best year for the Switch. So I'm really looking forward to all of these upcoming game releases. And just, yeah, in general, we've been getting a lot of good games, even so far. Like this month, we're getting Pikmin 4. 
Tears of the Kingdom is my new favorite game of all time. That game is excellent. I didn't need to spend too much time on that in this video since I feel like most people know that it's already an excellent game. And then all the other things we've been getting, it's just really exciting. And I'm really looking forward to all of these titles for um the rest of the year, like Super Mario Bros. Wonder and Super Mario RPG. Yeah, I'm really excited to play all these different games. Uh, I'm definitely probably getting all of them, except I I'm still deciding on Detective Pikachu. I feel like that's the one where I'm a little bit... Yeah, I might wait on um, that, but... I don't know, the game seems kind of a little bit rough, but it it may be good, but I, I don't expect it to be anything amazing. I, I still have to play the first one anyways. Yeah. Um. So yeah, but I'm excited for all the games. I'm definitely going to get Pikmin 1 Plus 2 physical edition and the uh, warrior move it uh so yeah i'm very excited yeah but anyways thank you guys for watching this video make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more and check out my amazon affiliate link in the description and also check out anton retro's channel as well so yeah thank you guys for watching and goodbye see ya